What I have right behind me is the all new Ford Expedition and this happens to be the platinum version. And I gotta say, this is a phenomenal SUV, especially to a family that enjoys the right height of a truck and the quality of a durable pickup truck. Because this drives more like a truck because as we'll see once we get inside the truck, this SUV, it shares a lot of like amazing features that you expect to find on the F-150s, 250s, and 350s. And it has a good amount of ground clearance as it's rated to have 9.7 inches. This already benefit me as I was able to park the car like this in a crowded parking lot. So it allows me to adapt in situations. And then of course you also got the Tremoline Expedition trim piece for additional ground clearance and rock guard protection. But as we approach the vehicle, this does have automatic side steps. Now powering this Ford SUV is the high output 3.5 liter EcoBoost, which puts out 380 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque, which allows this expedition to carry a maximum towing capacity of 9,300 pounds when properly equipped. But regardless, all new Ford expeditions can tow a minimum of 6,000 pounds. In the back here, we do have the uh, fuel capless filler fuel. And then if we swing onto the back right here and open up the hatch or the cargo hatch, I guess I'll call it. You can program the height as you can allow it to extend even more and just long hold the little button right here for a couple of seconds until you hear like the interior chime and beep at you, letting you know that you have pre-programmed the height. But what I want to go ahead and show you guys is how much practical the, uh, or the cargo space back here is. Not only do I already have luggage right here showing you how i'm able to make these bags hold into place with these little bag holders they have here but if i move to the side you also have additional doors right here which folds up like so and you have this little hidden compartment as well as your like emergency jack your fuel filler and such right here all accessible but if we fold this down what i like about this car is that you have all all these rows of seats that you see folded up right now we have all control of it right here from this little button layout right here and they automatically fold down the headrest too all this is all automatic just however for the center row seat you can only fold them down but once you fold them down yeah you have a lot of space you can put like a queen size mattress back here if you really need to or a couple like 60 inch plasmas who uses plasmas these days flat screen tvs or oleds there you go that's more modern but once those so second row seats are folded down you have to physically go in there and push them back up if you want them to go back because those are not automatic unfortunately but the third row seat is and the third row seat has like cup holders usb-c ports a 12 volt outlet and they also have the capability to override the second row seat right there those buttons to fold them down or move them yeah a lot of storage really does feel like a truck than an suv though and before we hop into the driver's side uh, tail lights are refreshed they refreshed the expedition body design not too long ago with updated tail lights as well as headlights which is like new drl design back on the center row let me show you a couple of things ah yes here we are the back row so this is how much headspace I have. I'm 5'8". I have my cup holder, so they stated right there. A nice speaker right next to me. And I'm able to sit back here pretty comfortable. Uh, these buttons right here, they actually move my seat. Not, they don't control the front seat. I thought they controlled the mid row. Glad we went back here and tested out. They recline and incline. <laughs> Not bad. Pretty comfortable. Again, there's just plenty of storage in your air vents for the third row. It's right above here, as well as your light control and switch right here. And you also have your stealth hooks right here. I like these. And now we are in the second row. I have a lot of headspace. The sunroof, panoramic sunroof that it has going on. It's wide open and literally gives me a lot of lightage in here. I left the passenger seat default when my passenger was using it. I still continue to have enough legs, room space with the driver's seat position in the driver's seat preference. And of course my backpack is blocking it, but I also have a regular household outlet right here to charge a laptop as well as my USB A as USB C port. And I also have media control back here to control the radio station. 
AC, heated seats, no rear seat ventilation, but you can divide the ventilations between the head or legs only or all, as well as auto. It's really loaded back here. And of course, you still have your head vents are facing the your face, which are really amazing. Speakers and your light reach and such. Oh, and yes, you do have cubbies right here. But cup holders, I have a little miniature cup holder right here. Could probably hold like a McDonald's french fry tray. Storage, cup holder right here. Yeah, there's plenty of cup holders for the rear seat passengers. Now here we're on the back. See, you have amazing animation. But this is what I mean, that this feels more like an F-series pickup truck. There's a lot of storage, which is not a complaint. This is one of the beauties I like about F Ford's trucks in general. Look at this. This is big enough I could fit like two gallon water bottles in here if I really want to. And I have. Uh, it also has a 12 volt outlet right there in case you need, you need more uh, power ports. But so much storage. Driver compartment, passenger compartment. I said the two things reversed, but you know what I mean? It is absolutely brilliant. And I know Ford, they know their customers. And I see this vehicle great for those who have, who just love the height, right height of, an, of a pickup truck, but they need something more practical if they don't utilize the bed in the back. And this is where the expedition comes into play for those families. Because from here, everything reminds me of like an F-150. You'll even have the sunglass holders, your motion sensors when you lock the vehicle, if someone breaks your glass. This is equipped with Blue Cruise, which works phenomenal. And the steering wheel itself, the design is very F-150 as well. Even has some F-150 uh, features I'm going to go ahead and show you right now. One, before we start driving off, is the pillar. You have a number keypad right here. And then when you have the spotlight turned on, you can actually move it to position where you want it to be illuminating in case you're doing like yard sites at night. And it's all control inside this like massive 15 inch. That's all we need to do is just locate this top portion right here, tap on this little control icon and scroll down to lighting zones. So if we want this side to illuminate, it'll illuminate those reverse lights, those spotlights, so we can see and illuminate that work site or do all zones. Other cool things you can find here is if you tap the camera, you have your full 360 camera visibility here, as well as your backup lines. And right here, you do have towing trailer, pro trailer assist. And of course, you have cool little mini games here as well, like tiles, block, lane change, which is kind of like Frogger. Yeah, it's a silly, fun little game right here. And then you also have Sketch, which I'm sure you've seen a lot of people use already on these like vehicles. So now let's go ahead and take this bad boy on a quick drive so I can share with you my thoughts. So I am using the brand new Meta glasses, which allows me to capture this FOV for you guys more closely and more realistic than ever before than previously. So gear shifter is this little knob right here, and you do have your mode selector right here, which gives you the capability to switch between slippery, sand, mud, tow, sport and eco and they all have their own unique animation you have your here hill you have your hill assist your parking mode which this vehicle can self park if you really want to manual gear selector right here no paddle shifters just located right here in this little button and uh that's it uh, i'm gonna go ahead and talk about the blue cruise and how you enable it in just a little bit so the thing I almost forgot to mention is this is a 10 speed transmission. It's the same iconic again transmission that's been paired with the 3.5 EcoBoost for quite a while now from the Ford lineups of things like their F-150s and etc. And this one's been more tuned to be more comfortable than previously because sometimes, well, especially from 2017 transmissions, 10 speed. Uh, they weren't really optimized yet because the transmission was kind of rough, but this one is super smooth. It's really luxurious too, even though this is technically, I'll consider this a rugged SUV that can literally handle everything like a truck. And from this first person point of view, like if we remove the uh, expedition on the display right here, this looks like an F-150 and you don't look at the mirrors. As we're coming to a stop, I want to be quiet so you guys could hear how good, like, how quiet this interior is. So, with traffic all around me. It's 
pretty quiet. If someone was driving me around this thing while I was in the back, I'll easily fall asleep. I like it. Suspension's comfortable too. I also like this little right here. I can just rest my hand. I wish more cars had this. Now this is gonna be kind of hard, but 060 is about five seconds, but I'm stuck behind this car and it's a two car per green the car in front of him, he didn't go. So basically he rode everything and yeah, I'm not able to perform a 060 time. Oh, another thing I almost failed to mention, the key fob. It's the same like uh, key fob that they're being used since the 2017's uh, F-Series, which means you have the capability to automatically open up your hatch, remote start, and everything else. Oh yeah, it really does get to go when it needs to. Ooh, yeah, that's a good acceleration right there. But then when you have directions, it does show you the when you're gonna turn right here in front of the screen, as well as your Apple CarPlay or the built-in navigation system. It all synchronized automatically, even with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which does support both wireless and wired. Then Blue Cruise is available, and I'd like to activate it. Just push this button right here. Uh, hands free be prepared to uh, take control to resume control and just like that we're cruising with blue cruise you have sensors right here monitoring my eyeballs making sure I'm keeping my eyes straight and on the road not being easily distracted I could change like the distance between the front vehicle by just pushing this button right here you can probably see it right there it's like managing the distance right there and it works really well to the most part Braking's kind of rough, but there is traffic to be fair. And yeah, it's not bad, not a bad system. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to give you guys the real 060 time, but from my understanding, 060 takes 5.3 seconds, which in my opinion is perfectly fine. This damn Subi, I don't know why you went in there like that. All right. Yeah, make a rough turn. There we go. All because of this. Toyota or whatever, FRS 86 GT or whatever the heck they call them now. But regardless, this thing is pretty cool. It's a nice size SUV. It is expensive. A uh, competitor would be something like an, an Escalade, especially for a price tag, 90 grand. Escalade's like 10 to $20,000 more, but if you look for a pre-owned, you get a better deal that way. But this one, from my understanding, the MSRP is 90 grand. For 90 grand, it's pre-loaded. And the beauty about this car is not, it's not one of those type of cars you have to like baby it. This is a car that could abuse, that could be abused and it could easily handle it. But if you're curious of finding out more about the Escalate, I've actually have reviewed it. You can go ahead and check it out right over there. And that video next to that one is another awesome SUV. Not American, it's a British car. It's the Range Rover. I review it right over there. Price tags, honestly, for brand new, they're literally close to each other. So I think those two cars are good comparisons. Let me know in the comment section what other vehicle you like to see me compare the Expedition with. I like to hear your thoughts as well in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.